Chapter 10. Pete Sets a Trap. Who is Miss Sally? The Hollister children asked in unison. Rita jumped from the window seat and took her father's hand. Dad, they don't know Miss Sally, she said. Can't Kit and I take them over to see her now? Peppo laughed. Yes, you must meet Miss Sally. We think she's a pretty wonderful old lady. Then he said to Rita, I'm afraid it's too late today. You know Miss Sally doesn't like visitors after five o'clock. We'll go another time, Rita promised. Tell us about this lady, Pam begged. Miss Sally, said Rita, has a little house on the other side of Circus Island. She was here long before the circus came. Peppo smiled. Yes, long, long before. I know that the old lady is very wise indeed, and I often go to her for advice. Kit said he'd asked Miss Sally where she thought Nappy had gone, and she'd replied, No sensible dog would leave this island of his own free will. He was stolen. Just then the tea kettle began to sing, and Rita hurried to the houseboat's galley to prepare the little party. In a few minutes she returned with fancy cookies for everyone. There was milk for the children and steaming hot tea for the grown-ups. As they ate, Rita told them Miss Sally made lovely little figures out of seashells. You'll love them, she said. Sue jumped up and clapped her hands. Oh, I can't wait, she exclaimed. When can we go, please? All the children looked toward their father, wondering what he had decided about the houseboat and how long they would remain in Florida. He smiled, saying they would spend the rest of the children's vacation at Circus Island. Peppo and I are going to talk again about his selling his home. Maybe he can arrange things so we won't have to. In the meantime, he wants me to look at some other houseboats too, Mr. Hollister said. Peppo nodded and stroked Sue's shining dark curls. How would you children like to spin tomorrow on Circus Island, he asked. Yikes, said Ricky. Lunch and everything? Yes, real circus fair at our cafeteria. Oh, that'll be fun, thank you, said Holly. When the girls finished eating, Rita said she would like them to see her bedroom. The four hurried along a tiny companionway to the small stateroom she occupied. It had bright yellow curtains at the windows and a bunk built into the wall. Miss Sally made these curtains, Rita said, and the rag rugs on the floor. She, she's kind of like a mother to me and does lots of things for us. Across one side of the cabin were shelves of toy animals. Sue began ooing and awing over them. Pandas, teddy bears of all sizes, and dogs of many breeds. There were also striped red and yellow cats, green cows, and purple printed donkeys standing side by side with kangaroos and spotted leopards. Among the wonderful array was a wire-haired fox terrier, life-size and very realistic. Sue clasped it in her arms and sat down on the floor. Where did you get these adorable things? She asked. From people who sell them at the circus in the summertime, Rita replied. How would you like to take the little wire-haired terrier home with you? Oh, Rita, cried Pam, you shouldn't. I want to, answered the circus child. Sue will enjoy it lots more than I do. I never play with it anymore. Oh, thank you, Rita, Sue cried, hugging first her and then the stuffed dog. It certainly looks real, said Holly. Let's play a joke with it. How, said Sue. We'll call Ricky. Watch, Holly answered, her eyes twinkling. Going to the door, she called her brother, who came hurrying down the companionway. Holly waited out inside the room until he was almost there, then she shoved the play wire hair out at his feet. Oh, cried Ricky, jumping back. I nearly stepped on this little dog. The girl's gales of laughter interrupted him. As they popped out the doorway, he stooped to pick up the lifelike dog, amazement on his face. Then he grinned. Wow, this dog's almost realer than a real one, the boy declared. Rita gave him to me, Sue told her brother joyously, as they followed him back to the cabin. Look at the time, John, Mrs. Hollister was saying. We must leave at once, it's 5.15.
Thank you so much, Peppo, for a delightful afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow, Pete called as the family started for the causeway. Upon reaching the motel, the boy said he was going over to the Blakes to find out if there was any word of the missing poodles. Pam went with him. No, said the dog's owner when they questioned her. There's not a trace of Mimi and Fifi. The police found out where the wizard circus is, but none of the stolen dogs were there as far as they could tell, although they had no right to search the grounds to make sure. And we thought it was such a good clue, Pete sighed. As the children left the Blake house, they noticed a car drive up to the cottage, which was on the other side of the Hollisters. The manager and another man stepped out and went inside. Then an elderly woman alighted and began to exercise a wire-haired terrier on the lawn. Pete, Pam cried, he looks just like the toy one Rita gave Sue. He sure does. Sue came out of the motel just then. The little girl was still carrying the stuffed animal. Seeing the real dog like it, she squealed with glee. Look, she pointed, that must be my doggie's brother. The woman heard her and came toward the group with her terrier. What a clever imitation, she said, admiring Sue's toy. Her husband walked from the cottage just then, telling the manager he would rent it. His wife called to him, Dan, isn't this amazing? A real dog and a stuffed one that looked just alike. Her husband took Sue's dog in his hands to examine it more closely. It's the image of Bing, he exclaimed. All this time, Bing had been barking and jumping about, trying to grab the stuffed animal, but they kept it out of his reach. Bing's a trick dog, the woman said. She held up her finger and said, show the children how you can somersault. The wire hair leaped into the air and neatly flipped over. Then he barked three times when his owner said, how much are one and one and one? The children laughed merrily, but Pete suddenly became serious as a sobering thought came to him. Mr. Er, Easton's my name, the man told him. Mr. Easton, Pete said. Are you planning to stay at the motel overnight? Yes, and for several days. Then, Pete warned him, you'd better keep close watch of Bing. There seems to be a dog napper around. He steals trick dogs. Goodness, Dan, exclaimed Mrs. Easton. Do you remember that odd-looking man who wanted to buy Bing? The one who had the two white French poodles in his car? Mr. Easton asked his wife. Yes, she replied. Remember, we had quite a conversation with him. You don't think, was he kind of heavy set and wearing a bright blue suit? Pam asked. And was his hand bandaged? Pete said excitedly. Why, yes, as a matter of fact, Mr. Easton answered. Pete nodded. That's the man. Where did you meet him? At a gas station in the little town about five miles from here, Mrs. Easton replied. Does he know where you're staying tonight? Pete asked. Mr. Easton laughed grimly. He certainly does. He told us about Treasure Cove Motel. Well, thank you for the tip, son. I won't let Bing out of my sight. Pete was glad to hear this, but still he continued to worry about the whole thing. That evening, after the younger children were in bed and his parents had gone over to call on the Blakes, he sat outside thinking. Pity for your thoughts, said a voice, and Pam joined him. Oh, isn't it nice out here? Pam shut her eyes tightly and chanted, Starlight, star bright, first star I've seen tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Now, she said, turning to Pete, what are you wishing? That I'll catch the dog napper tonight. Pam, I have an idea. It may be crazy, but it's worth trying. Has Sue gone to sleep yet? Sue? Pam asked. What has she got to do with the dog thief? I want to borrow the toy dog Rita gave her. I'm going to use it to trap the dog napper. Pam stared at Pete in puzzlement. I don't understand. How can you do that? I think the man may come here tonight to try stealing the wire hair. 
I'll bet he hides somewhere on the grounds until he sees Bing come outside for his night airing. Then he'll grab him. Oh, I see, Pam exclaimed. You want to use Sue's dog as bait. Let's ask her for it. They ran to the cottage and found Sue still awake. When Pete asked her if he might borrow the toy terrier, she took it from under the sheet and gave it to him. Pete thanked her, and he and Pam left the room. There's some heavy string around that box of games we brought with us, Pete said. I'll get it and tie it on the dog. Pete found the string and tied it securely about the toy dog's neck. Then he carried it outside. We'd better watch from inside, Pam advised him. Okay, let's set the dog where the light over the front door will shine on it a little. We can hold the end of the string inside the window of Mother and Dad's room. If the man does come, Pete instructed his sister, I'll try to grab him and you scream for help. Okay. The hands of the tiny clock beside Mrs. Hollister's bed pointed to 9.30, when Pete's hand suddenly gripped Pam's arm. Look, he said in a hoarse whisper. A shadowy figure crouched over and came stealthily across the lawn toward the little toy dog.